Uh, to wrap up our study of uh, optimal monetary policy, I want to flag uh, a policy that can be helpful to complement monetary policy at the zero lower bound. So you remember that when you reach a zero lower bound, interest rates are at zero. Um, you cannot reduce the nominal interest rate further. So conventional monetary policy is stuck. But actually something that appears once you look at our dynamic model is that there is a policy that can that is isomorphic to monetary policy and that can be used at the ZLB, that continues to be uh, operational at the ZLB, and that's a wealth tax. And in fact, it turns out that a, a positive wealth tax is exactly the same, you know, changing a wealth tax would be exactly the same as changing the nominal interest rate. And why is that? Well, at a high level, it's kind of obvious because when you change the wealth tax, you're going to change the returns on savings, which is exactly what the nominal interest does. And um, so, you know, one way to make savings more attractive is to raise the nominal interest rate. When you raise nominal interest rate, you get more returns to savings. Uh, and so that tends to tilt to, you know, that tends to contract aggregate demand because people want to shift their spending from consumption to saving. Similarly, if you reduce the wealth tax, uh, you know, you tax wealth less, then accumulating wealth become more attractive, exactly like when the nominal interest rate goes up. And therefore, you, people are going to shift uh, their spending from you know, consumption and services to uh, holding wealth and saving more. So you can see this changing a nominal interest rate, changing a wealth tax operate exactly the same. And so in fact, when your nominal interest rate is stuck at the zero lower bound and you cannot reduce it further, uh, what you can do is actually start uh, playing with a wealth, with a wealth tax. Um, so you cannot reduce your nominal interest rate further, try to boost demand. But what you can do is increase the wealth tax because if the wealth tax is higher, holding wealth becomes less attractive because it's, it's taxed at a higher rate. And so people are going to shift, you know, they're going to shift away from saving and towards consumption. That's going to boost aggregate demand. Okay, uh, so that's an insight that comes out of the model, and you can see it. Uh, you can see it very quickly. So let me just show you how, if you introduce a wealth tax, it's going to appear in the aggregate demand curve, and how you can use it at the ZLB to replace monetary policy. Uh, so imagine that there is a wealth tax that we can denote. Um, let's denote it uh, tau. W. Um, okay, so tau is a typical kind of wedge and W for the wells. Uh, so imagine that you have a well stack like this. Uh, so what is wealth in the model? Well, the only store of wells are, are the government bonds. In this model, that's the only thing we have. Um, so because there's a well stack tau w uh, and you know at time t and you know this could also depend on t of course uh, the representative household holds a bt bonds that's the amount of wealth and that's taxed at a rate uh, tw so that means that at times t the household's tax liability is going to be uh, tax liability of the household. It's just going to be at times t. It's tau wt, which is the tax rate at times t times bt. So of course, the more you know, the more wealth you have, the more savings you have, the more you have to pay for this. Um, okay. And so then, so this is a tax. So how is the wealth, where is the wealth showing in the household problem? Well, it's just going to affect the budget constraint, and that's all. So we have a new budget constraint. Um, so the change in real wealth, to remember W is what we denoted the real wealth in the model. You have a W dot dot is a change of the real wealth over time. Um, and so we had R, WT, where R was a real rate, the rate of return on real wealth, but now that wealth is taxed at the, at the rate tau W, uh, now the rate of return on uh, wealth become R minus tau W. 
And so that's how this is how the real wealth is going to operate is that it's going to enter the budget constraint and in particular it's going to uh, it's going to the uh, wealth tax lowers returns on wealth. So you can see that reducing the uh, interest rate lowers returns on wealth and pushes people toward consumption. Here it's exactly the same. You raise the wealth tax, you're going to reduce the lower the return on wealth and you're going to uh, stimulate consumption. Uh, okay, and so the budget constraint, you have this extra term here and then the rest was the same. So you had to add, so this is interest income, then you have to add the labor income, which was one minus U. Uh, so unemployment rate, A productivity, L, minus spending, which was one plus tau theta, C, and then you had also uh, the household also had to pay up some tax, T O R P. Um. Okay, so this is just the new budget concern. And you can see basically the household problem is exactly the same as before. Except uh, that the real uh, returns on wealth are R minus TW instead of R. So before, without wealth tax, your real returns were the real interest rate. With wealth tax, it's the real interest rate minus uh, minus the wealth tax. And so as a result, what happened in this new model is that uh, everything is the same except the aggregate demand. because uh, nothing else, you know, on the aggregate supply curve, nothing is going to be affected. So only your aggregate demand curve, and basically in the aggregate demand curve, so, you know, we had called it YD, uh, the only thing that's going to happen is that you had delta minus R, right? That's what we had before, and that was divided by sigma prime of zero's marginal utility of wealth. Then we had uh, epsilon here, one over one plus tau theta epsilon minus one. Right, so we had this, uh, but except that now instead of having delta minus R, we need to have delta minus R minus tau W because the, the returns have changed from R to uh, R minus tau W, where tau W is a wealth tax. And so the, the aggregate demand is basically delta minus R plus tau W divided by sigma prime of zero, epsilon one over one plus tau theta, Epsilon minus one. And so you can see here that uh, basically the wealth tax shows up directly in the aggregate demand. And so by moving the wealth tax, you can also control aggregate demand. Uh, and so you can see here by raising wealth tax, you're going to push people to consume more instead of saving. and therefore boost aggregate demand. And you can see directly here that if tau W goes up, then you can boost aggregate demand. And, um, but this is uh, the key The key insight here is that the wealth tax is not subject to the ZLB. So even if your interest rate is stuck at the ZLB, you, know, you can raise your wealth tax to whatever you want to make saving less and less and less desirable and boost demand as much as you want and therefore bring the economy back to efficiency. Um, so if the wealth tax was part of the stabiliz stabilization apparatus of the government, uh, you know, you would imagine that the ZLB wouldn't be a problem anymore. And by coupling, and of course, then there, there are like political issues that no, stabilization and monetary policy is independent from Congress, usually, whereas everything that has to do with taxation is determined by Congress. So here you can see that, in fact, Congress as a, well, they haven't, you know, there is no wealth tax um, in the US, but if they implemented a wealth tax, Congress would have a tool that could compete with what the Fed does. Uh, so, you know, you'd have to design institutions that work well, but at least in theory, the wealth tax could uh, replace monetary policy when you're stuck at the zero lower bound. Uh, the wealth tax is not subject to the LB. That's something that you can see uh, directly in the model. Uh, 